Hello everyone. So in this lesson, I'm going to explain to you and show you examples on how to visualize decimal numbers. So we may visualize decimal numbers using blocks, using grids, number lines, and money. Let us recall first the place value of decimal numbers. Kasi gagamitin natin ito mamaya in changing fractions into decimal numbers. So let us have 1.234 as the example, remember, the first digit before the decimal number is in the ones place. Now, after that, we have here a decimal point. And all the numbers after the decimal point are considered as decimal numbers. So, tinan nyo po muna yung first digit. The first digit after the decimal point is in the tens place. The next digit is in the hundreds place. And the third digit is in the thousands place. Now, if we have 1.234 as a decimal number, it means we have two tenths, three hundredths, and four thousands. Now, let us start with visualizing decimal numbers using blocks. So, for the first example, I have here ten blocks and three of it were shaded. So, in fraction, if we're going to express it using a fraction, the denominator would be 10 and the numerator is 3. So, we have 3 ten. If we're going to change it into a decimal number, ito yung dapat yung tandaan or you need to consider. First, identify the denominator and think of it as the place value of the decimal number. So, we have here. 10 as the denominator. So, in uh, decimal place value, it is equal to tenths place. So, as you can remember or as you remember, tenths place is the first digit after the decimal point. Another thing to remember is to look at the denominator and count the number of zeros. So, isa yun sa paraan na pwede nyo ring tandaan. So, if you're going to look at the denominator, so, if you're going to look at the denominator, we have 10 and the number of zeros is 1. So, we have only one zero. That is why we have written only one digit. So, we have only one zero. That is why we are going to write only one digit after the decimal point. Again, tens place, one zero, one digit. So, what are we going to write in this place value? So, look at the numerator. We have 3. That is why we are going to write 3. So, the answer is 0.3. Another one. So, we have here another 10 blocks. So, we are going to use it as the denominator, which is over 10. And for the numerator, the shaded parts are 9. So, we are going to write 9 over 10. Again, look at the denominator. We have 10. It means we are going to write the digit in the tenths place. So, yun po yung unang digit pagkatapos ng decimal point, di ba? Yun nasa tenths place. Next, look at the number of zeros sa denominator. We have only one zero. That is why our answer for this one is correct. Only one digit lang din po. Now, what will be the number or the digit that we are going to write in the tenths place? Look at the numerator again. We have 9. So, we are going to write here 9. Next is visualizing decimal numbers using grids. So, as you can see, we have here 10 grids. If we are going to express it using a fraction, we have 6 over 10. 6 are the yellow part and 10 is the total number of the parts of the grid. Next, let us change it into a decimal number. So, how are we going to change it into a decimal number? Again, look at the denominator. We have 10. That is why we are going to write the decimal number in the tenths place po ulit, yung unang-unang digit. To check, tingnan po natin kung ilan yung zeros. Ilang zero, we have only one zero. That is why this is correct. Isa lang po ang ilalagay natin. Now, look at the numerator. We have 6. That is why we are going to write 6. Next, we have here a total of 100 
grades. That is why we are going to write 100 as the denominator. And the red part is 23, which will be the numerator. Now, how are we going to express it into a decimal number? Let us write first the decimal point. Now, look at the denominator. We have 100. So, it means we are going to write the digits up to the hundredths place. So, let us write first a decimal point. And then, how many digits up to the hundredths place? We have tens, hundredths. So, we are going to write two digits. Let us check. Again, look at the denominator. Tignan natin kung tama yung ginawa natin. Ilang zeros ang meron? We have two zeros and we have two lines here. Yan, tama po. Now, what are we going to write in this blank? Look at the numerator. We have 23, so we're going to write 23. How about if the given is like this? So, we have 100 grids again, but the shaded part is only 5. So, we are going to write 5 over 100. Now, how are we going to express it using a decimal number? Again, look at the denominator. We have 100. So, it means you are going to write a decimal point and write lines to show the hundreds place. So, tens, hundreds. To check, tignan natin kung ilang zeros yung meron sa denominator. We have 1, 2. So, it means you are going to write only 10. Two lines here. So, let's see natin kung tama yung ginawa natin. Again, one decimal point and two blanks. Okay, that is correct. Now, how are we going to write five if we have two lines here? Paano natin ilalagay yun? Again, we are going to write the digit in the hundredths place. So, which of these lines is in the hundredths place? This is the tenths place and this is the hundredths place. It means we are going to write five on the second line. Now, what are we going to write on the first line? If we have, if we don't have any numbers to write here, what we are going to write is zero. Next, visualizing decimal numbers using number lines. So, I have here the first example. We have the number line 0 to 10. So, since we have 10 numbers here in the number line, the numerator will be 5, which is the encircled number, and the denominator is 10. To change it into a decimal number, again, write the first, uh, the first part, which is the decimal point, and then first digit, or only one digit, because we have 10 as the denominator, and we're going to write the numerator, which is 5. Another one. If we have this example, so we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, up to 1.0. So the chosen number is 0 0.2. So we are just going to write it as 0 0.2. And then how are we going to change it into fraction? So balikad naman tayo dito. To change it into fraction, what is the place value of 2? So after the decimal point, we have tenths. So, it means that the uh, denominator will be 10. And what will be the numerator? The numerator is 2. How about for this one? We have the missing part in the number line. So, we're just going to get the decimal number for this one. So, for this one, we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, blank, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0 0.9. So, the missing part is. 0 0.5. Last one is visualizing numbers using money. Always remember, in visualizing numbers or decimal numbers using money, 1 peso is equal to 1. This is an example of a whole number. Just like 20, 50, 100, 200, 500, and 1,000. Now, where are we going to use the decimal numbers? We are going to use it for 25 centavo coins. So, for example, we have 
four of these 25 centavo coins. Let us express it first using a fraction. So we have four 25 centavo coins. That is equal to 4, 4. Because 4 decimal coins is equal to 1 peso. They are the same. So, kung meron kang apat na 25 centavo coin, piso na po ang halaga nun. Now, to change it into a decimal number, it is equal to 1. Now, if we have only 3 25 centavo coins, we are going to express it first using a fraction. So, we have 3 fourths because 4 is equal to 1. That is why we have that as the denominator. And then 3 because we have only 3 25 centavo coins. Now to change it into a decimal number, let us just get the total of the 25 centavo coins. So we have 3, 25 plus 25 plus 25 or just simply 25 times 3 which is equal to 0.75. Next, so we are going to express this at express it as two-fourth or change it into its lowest term. So the lowest term is one-half. What will be the decimal number? So again, just add or get the total of the centavo coin. So we have two 25 centavo coin, which is equal to 0.50. For the last one, we have only one centavo coin or only one 25 centavo coin. So we're going to write it as one fourth. Now to change it into a decimal number, we are not going to add anything because we have only one. That is why it is equal to 0.25. Now another example is this. What if I have one peso coin and another one peso coin? So this is equal to two pesos or 2 as a whole number. If I'm going to add 1 25 centavos, this is where I'm going to show a decimal number. So I'm going to use 0.25. So the total of this is 2.25. Another one, if we have 2 of this 50 peso bill, so 250 is equal to 100. Now, if I'm going to add 1, 2, 3 centavo coins, it is equal to 